welcome to week three of our at home edition. My name is Vivi Diaz and I'm one of the youth leads at our Hunter Park campus. And listen, all of us youth leads are so excited that you're joining us tonight. One of our favorite ways to start off service, no matter where you're watching from, whether in your room like me, in your dining room or at your kitchen table is with some fun. And listen, tonight we have got a lot of it. So first off, check this out. What's going on, Sandals Church Youth? My name is Scotty. I'm youth lead at our Woodcrest campus, and I am joined here with... Hey, guys. Uh, my name is Dane Perzak. I'm the youth lead at uh, Palm Avenue. Palms up. Woohoo! Woohoo! That is correct. That's We're right. so glad that you decided to tune in to Blindfold Guessing, where Dane here from Palm is going to get an item that is placed in front of him, and he has to figure out what it is. Dane, are you ready? I'm, like, super, super ready. Can you see that. anything? I cannot see. Is there uh, any reason why you're wearing your glasses over your blindfold? I feel like it would help the uh, the senses. It's, you know. Can you feel it? I don't think any senses are gonna help you today. Okay. <laughs> let's for, get the first item the out of here. Are you ready, Dane? I'm like, yeah. First I'm, item. I'm ready. Let's let's uh let's let's do this. Okay, I just need you to be very, very careful with this item because it can make a splash. <laughs> <laughs> I just feel stuff? Yep, okay, go ahead. was that a snake? If it's a snake, I'm bailing on this whole thing. Where did you get the idea of a snake? Okay, I don't know, it made a sound. Because it's rattling. Everyone just better calm down. Let's all just relax. Oh, it's a plate. It's a plate with stuff. A plate of what? Oh, oh. Are they teeth? Did you guys put teeth on a plate? <laughs> Is it teeth? Tell me if it's teeth. Human teeth. Is Granola it granola? On a plate? It is granola. It is, it is really? what hippies love to eat and enjoy. Do you love to eat your granola raw? Yeah, you know, raw or boiled, you know. Very I good. Like granola. Very good. All right, you ready for your next item, Dane? Yeah, yeah. Keep it, uh, keep it rolling. That's good granola. Oh, yeah? Okay, go I'll ahead and figure out what it is. Okay. Go ahead. It's on the table now? It's on the table right now. This game is just like, there's nothing on the table. <laughs> What is happening? <laughs> this is really freaking me out. What Something's is moving. I don't know. Is it dangling? You got something dangling? There's literally... What was that? What was that? Very careful. Okay, is that seriously like some sort of hamster? I touched it. It's a hamster. What? I I used to have a pet hamster. What so was you guys name? are like... Uh, his name is Twiggy. Twiggy, I huh? I saved up money. And then he... Oh, God! Is it a hamster? It's moving. Okay. It is not a hamster. <laughs> It's moving though. Go ahead. <laughs> you guys are too much. Oh, okay. It's not a hamster. It may have <laughs> it's died. A, it's a hamster it's a coat. A little coat for your hamster. A little coat. <laughs> oh, okay. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Give me a second. Give me a okay. Second. It's like a stocking. Is it a stocking? You think so? Yeah, yeah. Because you're like, oh, stocking. Dane, you are correct. It is a stocking. Oh, Very well done. Okay. Hey, give me wow. a high five. Up top, thank you very much. All right, let's Heck get yeah. that next item out here. I need you to approach slowly. We okay. do not want to alarm this next item. Okay. Okay. Okay, I don't know so what's go making ahead. a noise right here. What is that? <laughs> okay. Is this a person making noise? Oh, what is this? Ah! <laughs> What is this? What is it? It's, some, it's a little chihuahua? A little is it chihuahua. A cat or a chi what, is <laughs> <laughs> what is that? Wait, okay, there's something on it. Is it a strange animal? A wombat? <laughs> what is a wombat? Never what seen do you a think wombat? it is? What do you think I it think is? I think it's a little puppy. Is it a little puppy? <laughs> How did you guys get a puppy in here? This it is, is awesome. a little puppy. If you want to take your this blindfold so off and see this puppy, you may. Oh, oh, little puppy. What's up, little buddy? No way. This was the best game ever. <laughs> Thanks for wow. tuning in to Blindfold Guessing, and we'll catch you on That's the next great. segment. Well, that was so much fun, and who doesn't love a puppy? One of my favorite parts 
We're just seeing Dane's face completely light up once he figured out that it was a puppy. And so hopefully that gave you a good laugh. But right now I just want to say again, welcome to Sandals Church Youth. My name is Vivi and I am one of the youth leads at our Hunter Park campus. And so yes, we love to have fun, but what we're all about on Wednesday nights here at Sandals Church Youth is this vision of being real. And so we're still going to continue to give you guys that environment in groups where you get to be real. And so if this is your first time joining us, we're so glad you're here, so welcome. But we would love to get you connected into a group tonight. So send us a message at sandalsyouth at sandalschurch.com. Hopefully it's in this link right here. And let us know who you are and where you're watching from because we'd love to get you connected in a group so that you have a place to be real tonight. And we're going to have so much fun in this service tonight. And so if you are watching, share this link with your friends. Invite people to come watch. They might be at home bored and all it takes is an invite. And we've got a lot in store. And one of those things is me and the other youth leads have been obviously at our homes kind of just bored. And so we've been thinking of fun ways and fun things to do. And one of those things is a scare cam. So this past week, we've all set up our cameras and scared people and had a blast while doing it. And hopefully you will too. So check out and see what happens. Hi guys, Blake and Taylor here. Um, we're going to attempt to scare Ethan Wall, uh, and we want him to drop his fish sticks. Uh, I called out and you weren't there. Yeah. Okay, dude. <laughs> You're killing me. Yes. boy Christian from the Menifee campus and I am going to scare my sister today the plan and I hope this goes well and I'm going to hide in the laundry closet. trying to scare you guys because it is a whole day later and I'm in my backyard in my feels because my scare was just bad. I decided to put all my favorite different scares in one place. So check this out. <laughs> Notice the pre-social distancing. <laughs> the foot song. This one's my favorite. scaring my son right now, who's only a toddler, but surprisingly difficult to get a good reaction from. Let's see if I can pull it off. Ah! Yo, what is up guys? My name is Dick Williams. I'm a youth leader from Santa Church, Myrna Valley, and I'm gonna scare my future sister-in-law. <laughs> Hey everyone, my name is Madison and I am the wife of Jared Moses, who is the East Valley Youth League. And I heard that there's going to be a scare cam for Sandals Youth. And Jared's been talking about how he's going to get me and I'm going to be so scared that I'm going to get him first. Hey, what's up, Sandals Church? He's Scotty from the Woodcrest campus. I'm about to do the scare cam on my two-year-old son rather than my pregnant wife, pick and choose. But hey, I'm gonna be hiding in this closet. Let's see what happens. Scare cam! <laughs> Playing hide and 
seek. And I think I'm gonna get him. Boo! So that was fun. I don't know what it is about scaring people, but I love doing it. And contrary to my terrible scares, I'm still sorry about that. It's just hilarious. And I love that we finished with Graham, Justin's son, little Graham, who was just like, da da, and then totally got scared. Like even though we saw that whole thing coming, it was still hilarious. But right now I do want to talk about something that I don't think any of us saw coming. And it really is just what we're going through right now because I know a lot of us are going through feelings of anxiety and unknown and just fear. And for a lot of us, even loneliness. And so right now we would love to give you some encouragement from our youth lead from our East Valley campus, Jared Moses. And so please check this out and be encouraged. Yo, what's up guys? My name is Jared Moses and I'm the youth lead over at the East Valley campus. I just wanted to share a little something with you guys about loneliness. I think it's super important in times like these that we remember the kind of God that we serve. In fact, one of the most encouraging things to me right now in this moment is that the Bible tells me that when I have received the promise and life-saving grace that comes with believing what Jesus did on the cross, the Bible says that I have God's Holy Spirit living inside me. And that's been such an encouragement when I think about one of my favorite worship songs right now, it's Surrounded. I may be surrounded by so many other things, so many worldly circumstances, but I know that really I'm surrounded by God. And even more than being surrounded by God, I have his presence living inside of me. In Galatians 2.20, it says, for I have been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ Jesus that lives inside of me. And for me, that's something that's so encouraging because I know I have God's Holy Spirit dwelling inside me. And I know that whatever I'm going through, no matter how lonely I feel, I'm never alone. But even in these times, I'm also encouraged by the fact that the church is not a building. We are the church as God's people. And so even when we are not meeting in a physical place, the church still exists. I hope you guys are encouraged encouraged by that. I love you guys. Know that God's in control in this time and I'm excited to see what he's going to do in your life. I'll see you guys later. I love that last bit that Jared just shared that no matter how lonely I feel, I am never alone. And that is just one of the ways that believing in the God that we believe in, that being a part of the church that we are a part of can completely transform you. And so right now we're actually gonna hear from our youth worship leader, Taylor Ridge, and hear about his story and how God has transformed him. So check it out. What's up Sandals Church Youth? I am Taylor Ridge. I'm the Sandals Church Youth Worship Leader. Uh, and I just wanted to share my testimony with you guys. I actually got saved at a really young age. I was about five years old. I remember driving home from the bowling alley and my dad was just explaining to me like what sin was and the fact that I, I needed a savior, I needed Jesus. So in that moment, uh, I put my faith and trust in God. And uh, you know, from then on, I, I was saved, but um, my relationship with Jesus was not deep. I was just going through the motions, doing the things, going to church on Sundays, saying the Christian words and the things, but my personal relationship was just not deep at all. And so I pretty much lived my life just going through the motions all the way through high school and into college. And it wasn't until I started serving in youth group uh, as a small group leader and I was helping lead the music. Um, it wasn't until then that God really started to change my heart. He started to shape my desires and, and give me a passion for, for students and, and for Jesus and, and for discipling and for uh, leading worship. And so once that started to happen and God was changing my heart, I started praying more. I started reading my Bible. I started looking for people who could speak into my life. And I started to build my relationship with Jesus. And so that was going on and it was, it was incredible. Then God opened up this door for me to move to California and I was able to come to Sandals Church and I was able to do an internship called Rogo School. And I went throughout that and it was a life-changing experience. It was so, so good. And after I finished Rogo School, um, they actually uh, offered me a position here where I could stay and, and lead Sandals Church Youth and Worship. Um, and man, it's just been incredible ever since. And that is basically my testimony from from there to here so yeah thanks guys i hope that you felt encouraged by that i know after watching that i just felt pumped to think about that we have some incredible people on our Sandals Church youth team. And I know I felt encouraged to know that God can transform my loneliness, 
but also after hearing Taylor's story, just being encouraged that God can completely transform even my life. And so tonight, I'm really excited to hear the message that we've got because we get to hear from our network youth lead, Justin Knowles. And I'm excited because he's going to talk to you about what it looks like for God to transform your life. And the reason I'm so excited about it is because I know that as Justin was prepping for it, he had an idea of something else he was going to talk about. But as he was prepping, he just felt like God was telling him, no, I want you to teach on this. And so whenever that happens you know it's gonna be a good message. And, and I believe that wholeheartedly for you guys tonight. And so my prayer is that God speaks to you guys tonight through this message. What up Sandals Church, you so glad that you're here with us no matter what campus you're watching from or wherever you're watching from, we're just glad that you're tuning in and that we're still breaking out into small groups afterwards. Uh, I'm really pumped, here we go. We're just gonna dive right on into this. And so uh, let me ask you a question really quick. Have you ever played the game, uh, Would You Rather? Right, really simple game. Hey, would you rather do this or would you rather do that? One of my favorite questions that I always ask in this game that it's my go-to one is, hey, would you rather fart confetti or have eyebrows that move around your face every time that you talk, right? It's kind of ridiculous, it's really fun. And here's the thing is that girls, ladies, you're actually really good at this game. Uh, you create questions to conversate and to, to get deeper in relationships. But guys, we suck at this game. We're not really good at it at all because we create these ridiculous scenarios like, hey, would you rather eat ice cream or would you rather burn to death, right? <laughs> like that's like the, the difference between guys and girls playing this game, which is just goes to show you that guys will never fully understand girls, but that's a whole nother message for a whole nother time. Now the thing is with this whole would you rather thing, it's not a new concept at all, actually. God's been asking humankind since the very beginning, would you rather questions since Genesis 1, since the very beginning, of, of who we are and you know and basically what he says is like hey would you rather live your way or would you rather live my way that's the question that God tends to ask us say would you rather live a status quo same old life or would you rather live a life that is designed to radically change you from the inside out when you follow me and I'm sure God has a preferred answer in one of those things in one of those answers but the great thing about our God is that he doesn't force us to choose he actually allows us to choose what way we want to live and how we go about that life. And so today I wanna to actually ask you a question. I figured that this is a really good time to ask that question is would you rather be a Christian or would you rather be a disciple? And the reason why I wanna ask you that question is that for a lot of us, let's be honest, let's, let's be real here, is that we think that because when we go to church, we're a Christian. When we occupy a seat, we're a Christian. And in reality, that God actually calls us to be a disciple. And now in this time where during the coronavirus stuff is that we actually can't go and meet at a church. We can't physically gather in a place or a dwelling and take up a seat and check off the box of being a Christian. But this is actually a time to determine whether or not we're a Christian or if we're going to be a disciple of Jesus. And I want to bring a little bit of clarity to this idea of a Christian, because I think for a lot of us being a Christian, merely means in believing in a certain amount of things or certain things or you say certain things or you go certain places and that automatically makes you a Christian. And you know, and it's kind of like this superficial meaning of Christian that has created some problems like, because we have a lot of Christians who actually don't look a lot like Jesus. And I think that causes a little bit of, of issues and the, and the word Christian kind of seems to have been watered down. Right, it's kind of like the word love, right? We love a lot of different things. Like I love my wife, that's pretty good. I love my kids, I, I love them more than anything. But I also love like Snickers, I do, it's my favorite candy. I love The Office, I love the LA Rams football team. I love sunsets, I love donuts, I love my friends, I love Netflix right now. I love Jesus, right? Like. I love all these different things and it's kind of been like this watered down definition of what this is and I think that's what the same is true with this word of, of Christian. It's so weak and beaten down, made fun of, and it only gets a real definition when there's a little bit of action behind what the word actually means. That the word Christian, did you know this? The word Christian only appears three times in scripture. And it's not even really that defined about what it means, but the, actually the the word that's actually terrifying in, in the Bible is, is disciple. 
because that term is actually very defined and there's a, a, a certain way that a disciple acts when it comes to Jesus that actually lays out a really good way of how we are supposed to live our lives rather than just acting the part. And in a sense, the difference between Christian and disciple is this, and if you're taking notes, you could write this down, um, that a Christian is about what one believes, but a disciple is, a, is about a, what a person actually does. And, and another way that you could say that um, it can look at as a Christian often is an act, but a disciple is an, about a person's actions. And so a lot of people act like a Christian. A lot of people know the right things to say and, and all that stuff. They act because they check off the box when they attend a church or attend a Wednesday night at your campus or attend a small group, just pop up. But their life really doesn't reflect who Jesus is. And so let me just warn you that as you're listening, that you might be frustrated at me. You might get mad at me even at some points because I kind of want to mess with your definition, our definition of what a Christian actually is. Because it may be painful for some of you to hear because there's a really big difference between a Christian and a disciple. And so I know that some of you might even be listening and you're just kind of investigating this whole thing and you're like, yeah, you know what? There's a lot of Christians who actually don't look a lot like Jesus who I hear about all the times. So you're going, yeah, you know that? Yeah, that's right. And, and maybe for some of you, you've been waiting and just kind of doing the church thing until you're done with school. And then once you're out of your house, that's not a part of your life anymore. But here's the thing that I want us to, to kind of think differently is what if we use, you know, a term that I like to use is apprentice. When you would go apprentice for someone is you would go alongside the master and learn everything that the master did. And then you were, you stopped being an apprentice when you and the master were indistinguishable, meaning that the skills that you picked up from the master are the skills that you have. And so what if we were to be apprentices of Jesus to where we are following him and taking on and learning from him to where how we live our life and how Jesus calls us to live our life are indistinguishable. And see, and, and Jesus masterfully communicated what this looks like for us in his famous sermon, the Sermon on the Mount. And this is what it looks like. And this is where I want us to be challenged, students, as we're listening to this, as we're, as we're diving into what the difference is between a Christian and a disciple. And Jesus paints this picture uh, of, of how his disciples are supposed to be different. So I want you to think about this in your context right now with where you stand, okay? So this is found in Matthew 5. Um, and it's, again, it's the Sermon on the Mount. It's one of Jesus' fam fam most famous teachings, okay? So listen up to this. Matthew 5, starting in verse 13. It says, You are the salt of the earth. But if salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? Have you ever thought about that? Like if salt loses its flavor, is it just sand, grains of, of dirt? But he makes a sense, if salt is not salty, what is it, right? It's no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. Meaning that if salt is not salty, it's useless. And if, you're, if you are the light of the world, he says, a town built on a hill cannot be hidden, Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on, uh, on its stand and it gives light to everybody in the room or in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. So Jesus uses these two common images to describe how we're supposed to be different. He uses salt and he uses light. See, why salt, okay? So if you think about it, back in the day, there was no fridge. There was no way to keep things from decaying when if they're just laid out. So they, they would actually put salt on the food to, to delay the decay in the food that they would eat. And so like salt, though, if you think about it, salt isn't really seen in food, right? Unless you like put it on top of something, but salt is more sensed. You could tell when something has too much salt. And Jesus is saying that if you are the salt of the earth, that if people can't see God, that they could definitely sense God through you. They should sense God in you because you are the salt of the earth, because of you. Now with light, Jesus actually says the same thing. It says, you are the light of the world. Now, while salt is still a powerful, invisible nature to it, light has a more obvious attachment to it. Right, everyone knows that, you know, that's why you have a little nightlight. I had a little nightlight when I was little, Graham has one in his room when he's sleeping, that even just a little bit of light could light up a room and let you see just enough to what's happening. So salt is sensed, light is seen. And so bottom line, the followers of Jesus, that a true disciple of Jesus, right? Not just a Christian, but a disciple of Jesus 
that disciples are called to be sensed and seen in the midst of the decay and darkness. And so this is why I want you to get this because Jesus didn't come simply just to enhance your life with religious rules. He didn't. That Jesus actually came down to this earth to radically transform your life from the inside out. That when you understand him and when you follow him and you allow him into your life, that people will begin to sense God in you and see God work through you. And that your life will be different. And, to, and he wants to invite you into an incredible journey to follow him into a richer, deeper, and more radical, meaningful life. And today, for some of us, Jesus might say to us, hey, you've heard it say before, go to church, read your Bible, tithe, get in a small group, listen to sermons, serve. But I tell you, surrender your heart to me, follow me, learn from me, uh, be my apprentice, allow me to transform you and mold you into my likeness. See, let's take a look at where this, where we stand and on the depth charts, okay? So I wanna give you three would you rathers that I need you and your groups to distinguish and to be able to really navigate through in this season uh, of where we are at right now. Question number one, it's a question of desire, okay? Am I really drawn to follow Jesus or would I rather play the part? See, playing the part is the thing that's easy. For some of us, playing the part of Christian is really easy because we, again, we check off the box, we go to the church, uh, we go to our groups, we know the right things to say, we know when to raise our hands during certain songs, we know when to jump in, we go to summer camp and we do all the things, it's just like check, 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 and we just play the part, but no one knows, if, they, if no one really followed you around or if you didn't post on social media, they wouldn't actually know that you're a follower of Jesus because how you live your life is no different than the world. How you live your life is no different from the people around you who don't follow Jesus. And I'm not gonna lie to you, playing the part's easy and actually following Jesus, that's the hard part because why? Because he tells us to forgive. He tells us to hold our tongue. He tells us to be slow to get angry. He tells us that we need to serve and get out of our comfort zones. He calls us to something way more. And so the question of desire is this, am I really drawn to follow Jesus? And before you give your Christian answer, right? Like, yes, I wanna follow Jesus, I'm in groups, and that's what I'm doing, right? Before we give, our Christian answer, here's the thing, like, let's consider the cost of following Jesus because it's not just owning the title of Christian, it's actually, there's a cost to it. I mean, it's a giving up of ownership of being in charge of my life. And so the call to follow is actually really radical and it's so revolutionary, countercultural, so different that Jesus says that when someone slaps you, you turn the other cheek. He says, love your enemies, to pray for those who hate you, uh, to give to those in need without posting it on social media to say, oh, look how good of a follower I am, right? Like that's, that's something that he tells us to do, that there's a cost of following Jesus and it starts with the desire to follow him in the first place. So, so, so consider maybe for some of us, your morning prayer in this time where we're at home and we're sheltering in place, you have, we have the time to do that. So maybe this is your morning prayer uh, and it's, God, I desire to, to live for you today. I desire to, for you to invade the areas, all the areas of my life. That's my heart's desire, let me live for you, right? Second question, it's, a, it's a, a question of decision. Am I really willing to not do my plans or would I rather do what's best for me? It's a huge question, it's a daily question. I, I hate this question because guess what guys? I, I really love my plans. In my family, in my friend group, I'm the planner. The things that I get to plan and be a part of, like, you know, the whole Sandals Church online, we're gonna be a part of planning summer camp, gonna be a part of doing all, like, all the, I love planning things. And here's the thing, is that my plans, they stem ultimately from my selfishness. All that to say, I'm not as selfish as I used to be. And I think by following Jesus and, and learning to give up my plans for his plans, I'm learning how not to be as selfish as I used to be. And here's the thing, and this is cool, is that when I surrender my plans to God's plans, Jesus supports and rewards those decisions. Look what it says in Matthew 33. It says, uh, seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously and he will give you everything that you need. So seek, desire, the kingdom of God, meaning Jesus' ways, above all else, meaning above the things that I want to do, above my own agenda, and live righteously, meaning live as a disciple is supposed to live, and the result, he will give you everything that you need. Not everything that you want, but everything that you need. 
And so ultimately what it comes down to is that being a disciple of Jesus is losing my plans to his plans. That's what it is. And so Jesus, he, what he does is, is he kind of navigates this. He asks us these questions as, hey, would you, you know, what does this look like every day? What, would you rather, he says, would you rather serve others in need or be comfortable and serve yourself? Would you rather be a person of integrity and not cheat your way out of school right now because you're doing online? Or would you rather, man, and just side note, sorry, like I just, all these thoughts just came into my head around seniors, man. I think this goes for you. I, I'm sure a lot of you are bummed right now. And I'm sorry that they just kind of just popped in my head. And I think this is a good question for you right now of how the underclassmen are looking at how you're leading through this or, or navigating through this. It's like, man, would you rather be a Christian or would you rather be a disciple? It's just, you guys came to my head. You guys have been on my heart right now. And you know, and Jesus also say, hey, would you rather follow me and let me mold you into my likeness and help you learn to express your anger in appropriate ways? Or hey, would you rather keep losing your temper and, and losing it on your friends or your family because now you're all quarantined together, right? And here, here's something that, I, that I've learned is that a lot, of what, a lot of what Christians do is that they usually act surprised when things don't go their way when they choose to do their own thing. And what I've discovered is that a lot of the hurt and pain that we feel in our lives usually comes back to this is that they usually choose their way over God's. And so third question that I wanna just end really quickly is a question of devotion, is what am I building my life on, right? Would you rather build your life on a rock or would you rather build your life in the sand? There's this, this passage in scripture, you can look it up, it's uh, Matthew 7, 24 and 27. But basically what Jesus says, hey, would you rather build your life on a rock, on my truth, on my word, or would you rather build your life on your up and down feelings, things that are not sure, on the sand. He says, you build your life on my truth and the rock, it's not gonna crumble, but you build on your life on anything else, it's the sand and what happens when the waves come and the storm comes, your life is gonna crumble. So let me leave you students, which one would you rather do? Would you rather be wise or would you rather be foolish? I think that's the question that Jesus wants to do. Would you rather live your life in a wise way by listening to him and his truth? Or would you rather live your life in a foolish way to where in building your life on a sand where the waves come and the life just falls down. And so ultimately it comes down to is a disciple is this, a disciple desires Jesus that a Christian, they just go through the motions. That a disciple sacrifices their agenda daily, uh, but a Christian does what's best for them. A disciple lives out their life as salt and light in the world, but a Christian says that they're a Christian, but they look like everybody else. See, ultimately what it comes down to is the beautiful thing about Jesus is that he doesn't force you to choose. He doesn't force you to choose anything, any of those things that he lovingly and graciously paints a picture of what following Jesus looks like. And he says, hey, would you rather live your way or would you rather live my way? And I wanna challenge you to a courageous prayer today. God, as of today, I wanna to be a disciple. I wanna be an apprentice of you, Jesus. And then take that, run with it, be a disciple, and watch how God moves in your life today. What a great question to end service on. Would you rather live your life your way or live it God's way? Listen, we love that every single one of you guys join us for service tonight. But our hope is that you guys are able to answer that question in a group tonight because tonight's message of what it means to be a real disciple was too good to not talk about it and so if you're in a group you already know the drill your youth lead or your youth leader should be hitting you up and blowing up those chats but if you are not in a group i want you to listen to me send us a message at sandals youth at sandalschurch.com because we want you to be able to have a safe place where you can be real and so that's our hope for you guys that you have safe places to be real that you can stay connected especially when right now we can't see each other or be together in person our heart is that you still feel like we're together and so if you have friends that maybe need to be encouraged by tonight's message or even just are feeling lonely or struggling with loneliness, send them tonight's message, send them the link, because I guarantee you this might be the thing that they need to hear. And maybe you are wanting just more encouragement in your life, 
check out everything that we have at sandalschurch.tv or on our YouTube channel. Just stay connected with us because we'd love to continue to have a presence in your lives. But listen, we love you. We're so thankful that you joined us tonight and we hope that you have some great conversations in group and we cannot wait to see you again next week.